Vishnu Parata, Dirt 
acknowledge dirt, not dirt, dirt, acknowledge in the field of philosophy or transcendental knowledge. Now the Lord says that this ninth chapter is the king of all such knowledge. The essence of all knowledge that can be derived from the study of the Vedas and different kinds of philosophy. It is the most confidential because confidential or transcendental knowledge involves understanding the difference between the soul and the body. And the king of all confidential knowledge culminates in devotional service. Generally, people are not educated in this confidential knowledge. They are educated in external knowledge. As far as ordinary education is concerned, people are involved with so many departments politics, social, sociology, physics, chemistry, mathematics, astronomy, engineering, etc. There are so many departments of knowledge all over the world and many huge universities, but there is unfortunately no university or educational institution where the science of the spirit soul is instructed. Yet the soul is the most important part of the body. Without the presence of the soul, the body has no value. Still, people are placing great stress on the bodily necessities of life, not caring for the vital soul. The Bhagavad Gita, especially from the second chapter on, stresses the importance of the soul. In the very beginning, the Lord says that this body is perishable and that the soul is not perishable. Anantavante ime dehanitya syokta sharirinaha that is confidential part of knowledge. Simply knowing that the spirit soul is different from this body and that its nature is immutable, indestructible and eternal. But that gives no positive information about the soul. Sometimes people are under the impression that the soul is different from the body and that when the body is finished or one is liberated from the body, the soul remains in a void and becomes impersonal. But actually that is not a fact. How can the soul, which is so active within this body, be inactive after being liberated from the body? It is always active. If it is eternal, then it is eternally active. And its activities in the spiritual kingdom are the most confidential part of spiritual knowledge. These activities of the spirit soul are therefore indicated here as constituting the king of our knowledge, the most confidential part of our knowledge. So we have a long paper, but we take a break here and uh, after we can pick up. It's four pages, five pages. <coughs> I was uh, just coming across it this week and I got a very strong inspiration. Let me take the course to talk about on Sunday because uh, so many nice people come together, devotees, and uh, we should discuss serious subjects.
Yes, every single verse of Bhagavad Gita is absolutely of the highest value, importance, whatever, how you want to call it. But I was thinking, the concept of knowledge is so nicely uh, expressed and explained here. Because nowadays we, we live in a, in a society where the concept of knowledge is so advertised. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a society of information, like anything. But despite all this advertisement of knowledge, we, we see we, we remain with unlimited problems. So actually, there is a lack of knowledge, although there is so much knowledge. So I want to talk today a little bit, what is the definition of knowledge, according to this verse. Actually, one of our acharyas, one, one, one was, uh, you know, um, considered uh, and is considered one of the most brilliant brains in India, in Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati um, He was very much concerned about uh, proper understanding of concepts. Uh, he wanted to write a, a dictionary of uh, redefining the original word meaning of every single word what we use in our daily language in English language and in Bengali language he wanted to do that he started that but he didn't finish that he says if I don't finish this I take a bird only to finish this dictionary why I can understand like definitions of words like religion knowledge what is ignorance? What perfection? We have an idea of the meaning perfection, an idea of religion, an idea of uh, what is knowledge, uh, definition of success, definition of energy. What is energy? What is potency? <clears throat> what means sacrifice? So all these words are extremely polluted today. <laughs> And that's why there are, there are of course, you, on every single <laughs> subject you can go to the library here. I know Copenhagen is full of libraries and you get so many books. And on each of the subjects you can find so many books. But generally as the conclusion, you get more confused. <laughs> that's all. So why we don't take this? I, today I want to touch a little bit how Krishna explains here the definition of the word knowledge. And then have a little bit, uh, it's so interesting because every time we understand a little bit about this real meaning of things of life, of words of life, we get more energized, we get more enthusiastic to do things what we are doing in our life. We know which direction to go. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so the Lord says here, uh, this knowledge is the king of education. Um, let's see some points here to begin with. He said this is uh, the highest education you can get. What? This knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, then he says, this knowledge is very secret. It is not only secret, it is the secret of all secrets. So we are not going to get it so easily. Then he says, it is the purest. If you know how to apply this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, it is absolute, spotless, uncontaminated knowledge without any single mistake. That's a dream world today. Who, who will can expect that today you will have information which is spotless and correct? It's almost impossible. Right? But this is the claim of Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Then another interesting point, he says, this knowledge, um, if you know the signs of using this knowledge, 
you get direct perception of yourself. You get a crystal clear insight in yourself if you get used to using this knowledge. And the more you get perfect in using this knowledge, you can crystal clear see who you are. Not only theoretically, not only uh, mentally, not only intellectually, you absolutely realize that is said. This knowledge gives, if you know the science of Bhagavad Gita, it gives direct perception of who you are by realization. Something will happen to you which is more than some brain waves, emotional brains. Realization, Gyan Vigyan, in Sanskrit is called, uh, you get experience of your total, absolute inner self in the most dynamic way, in the most pure way. So you can imagine, if you get used to this knowledge, what a life. Then, how Krishna is encouraging Arjuna? Huh? Then he says, once you get this knowledge, it can never go away from your memory. You will not lose memory anymore. And not only that, not only that, if you, if you get this knowledge, then uh, you become very joyful. So generally, we don't expect this in our modern definition of knowledge, is that, okay, if I want to get knowledge, I go to the internet, or if I get more serious knowledge, I go to the university, and I start studying, and I get all, all my books together, and I start studying, and, but you don't expect, after putting it all in your brain, that bliss will come. You just know a little bit more how to move here and there, or take up some responsibilities with that knowledge, but who expect that you get bliss from that? Yeah? But when you get used to this knowledge, you get absolutely, and that is, sukham means happiness, but it is not said sukham, it is susukham. Very joyful. Right? <clears throat> so, that is a, a very uh, encouraging way of understanding knowledge, and uh, actually, it is so important that we put our brain on it, put our energy on it, and live with it try to absorb all this knowledge. Actually, Bhagavad Gita is a book. You never finish it. Still after, I don't know how many times I, I went to it. And 25 times, 30 times, and every time you need inspiration, you open it and it refreshes. Still, many times I think, my God, I never read this or something. But it's like a new book. It is very special. It is very special. So, <clears throat> all the words uh, is used in this verse are superlative definitions. It is said here is the king of education. It's not just some type. It's the, the king. The king is the top of it. It's used, the king. And then, it is not only a secret. It is the secret of all secrets. It is not only the secret of secrets. It is the most secret of all secrets. That's not a superlative vocabulary. Then it is said, um, the purest knowledge. It's not said pure knowledge, the purest knowledge. Now, only a fool will not start working with this book after hearing this part. I think that. Uh, some insufficient intelligence capacity in the brain. After you get all this information, who will not start swallowing that knowledge and always be busy with it? Make it the essence of our life. Because who doesn't want everlasting happiness? And that's what we're always looking for. Right? And here he said you get it. Then another point here is, it said the perfection of religion. Now, that's also another nice, very encouraging definition for knowledge, it is said it is the perfection of religion. Generally, we have a very negative idea 
about religion. Right? Because we have misused religion. We have misused God. But that doesn't mean that the substance is bad. Water is good or bad? Water is good. Without water you cannot live. But you put all dirt in, you put poison in, then it becomes awkward and everybody throws it out. That's what has happened with religion and that was happening with God. Nothing wrong with God. Nothing wrong with religion. And there are some people that messed around with it, like man. So all these things have to be separated. The modern society says religion is the cause of all trouble. We have to keep away, far away. Especially in Denmark, they are very eager enough, right? They cannot conceive anymore to take religion serious or God. A few, there are exceptions, right? There is a general class. So we have to break these concepts to pieces. That is part of a teacher of Bhagavad Gita. He has to all remove all these misconceptions, all these doubts has to be removed again and again and again and again till the pure thing again comes out. No. <clears throat> so, in the Bhagavad Gita, it said, without religion, one remains on the animal platform. Animal platform means full of ignorance. He can only see with the eyeballs, and for the rest, he cannot relate, he cannot make much logic, he doesn't know what he's doing, he's just all day busy with trying to find some food. Such a, a, a lower consciousness life. Animal life is full of fear, and you see the birds always. Uh, running around because it has no it has no higher idea how to protect itself because it has no access to real knowledge. Uh, the point according to Bhagavata, according to Bhagavad Gita, um, what we have today in the universities is not considered knowledge. Actually it's strongly expressed. It is in the Vedic civilization, it is absolutely not taken serious. Technical, it's just technical information. Knowledge starts from the point when you start understanding the spirit concept. That is absolutely banned out of each and every university today. The modern society considers just opposite. As soon as you start to talk about the metaphysical, you are not considered an intelligent person and you do not get your degree. Right? It's just opposite. Actually, why these different opinions? We can trace that back from the... Again, from the Vedic literature, there are always two types of classes who are fighting always for the truth, the... How can you say? Dominancy also, to influence the world. The divine, devotees, who bow down for the Lord, and those who hate the Lord from the bottom of their heart. And their hate is so deep, and the material world supplies that they get if they do enough uh, good karma, they get the power to enter in each and every brain of every human being and change their way of thinking. So then the yeah, the demons, it is called Asura Baba and Deva Baba. There are divine people and demonic people. Now, that's also something in the modern society, they don't want that discussion. Don't distinguish somebody demonic and sometimes divine. That's good for the demons. <laughs> then they can absolutely keep playing their own tricks. But according to Vedic civilization, it's, it's identified. Some are demonic and some are divine. Of course, the deepest level, Every